my name is Ben Thorud, and today we're going to be going over um, wave and tidal power generation and some of the interesting techniques and ways that engineers have constructed systems and devices that are able to harness this electricity because the ocean has forever been a power source that has been admired and often feared throughout history but the great challenge in the contemporary world is to figure out how to harness the power of the ocean. So, we're first going to go over wave energy systems, which could be very interesting in the future because this is relatively untapped territory, yet there's still quite a bit of energy that can be harnessed from ocean waves. And according to one source, uh, the power density average on a per meter uh, basis is about 100 kilowatts per meter offshore, which is a decent amount if you are able to harness this energy with a uh, relatively good efficiency. But I'm going to be going over specifically four different categories of wave energy systems. Oscillating body devices, oscillating water column devices, elevated water reservoir systems, and a new one that is a very interesting technology is gyroscopic technologies. So we'll start out with oscillating body technologies and this is just one example of a oscillating body device. This one is a translational motion, one where it bobs up and down as the waves come. It's anchored to the uh, ocean floor and the cool thing about this device is that waves can approach it from any direction. So the fact that it's omnidirectional makes it advantageous. There are other devices that are considered oscillating body devices which use rotational motion rather than strictly translational motion. One of the most famous examples is the Palamus wave absorber. So the Palamus water absorber um, is a linear absorber that floats on top of the ocean um, in, with several modules and a snake-like resemblance as you can kind of see in the picture here. And it mechanically uses hydraulics as the waves pass over it, or pass through it, I should say. The oscillations via hydraulics are converted into mechanical power. It was first developed in 2004 and was improved upon um, in 2009. And it really was successful because it was the first generation system to be integrated successfully to a national grid. And the output of each module is about 750 kilowatts, which is impressive. All right, well, we're next going to talk about oscillating water columns. And this one is very interesting. It uses a chamber that is um, relatively sealed from the outside, and there is a uh, turbine generator. And based upon how the waves flow, you can kind of see in this diagram, it'll change the how the air is interacts with the turbine. So as the waves come in, the air flows past the turbine, and then as the waves come down, the air flows the other direction. Now, a lot of these oscillating water columns will have a special kind of turbine. One example is called a Wells turbine, where it is multidirectional, meaning that it can still generate electricity, and it will still spin in the same direction based upon even if the flow of the air is going in both directions. So it'll still be able to rotate and produce electricity despite the fact that the air is moving both through it one direction and through it the other direction. And differential equations are also very helpful in modeling some of these systems in a oscillatory sense. Um, and you could always add a, in this case, you could add a throttle valve uh, to control the damping of this system. Um, because I believe the turbine acts somewhat like a damper. So that's a very interesting application. We'll now move on to elevated water reservoirs. And this one is probably perhaps the most intuitive system because water splashes up. As you can see in this figure, it splashes um, up over the sides of this container into the elevated chamber. This elevated chamber, uh, which now has some of the converted potential energy of the waves, and it flows through a low head turbine because there's not too much pressure because this is not elevated so um, high above the rest of the water. It's, it's just a slight amount. Not necessarily the best or most efficient 
um, system, but it is a very interesting and intuitive system to think about um, with this slight potential energy change. We'll now move on to one of the most interesting and uh, new systems, which is a gyroscopic technology. The best thing about this one is that all the mechanical components are concealed within this enclosure, so nothing is really exposed to the harsh um, oceanic environment, which could be corrosive, cor corrosive because of the um, salt content. And this specific one, I believe, is called the inertial sea wave energy converter. And a full-scale model of this one was deployed in, back in 2015 in the Meter Mediterranean Sea. The mooring system for this kind of thing, the anchoring, is a little bit more complicated because it, this system has to interact dynamically with the waves in order to work because it's collecting energy based upon the inertial reaction. So the gyroscopes are able to sense um, how the waves are moving this system and is able to via um, reactions and then therefore convert it to electricity. It's quite expensive um, to have the technology and the gyroscopes within this one for maintenance and whatnot. So we're now going to transition into a different area. Um, we're going to look specifically at tidal systems which utilize the gravitational patterns of the world and of the Earth um, based upon the Sun's gravity and the, the Moon's gravity, which influence um, tides. So there's high and low tides. For example, we'll, we'll start with um, the tidal barrage system, which is very comparable to a hydroelectric dam. It does have a very invasive area footprint. And it takes up a lot of space, uh, shoreline, to put in this system. But it can be quite effective as with hydroelectric dams where basically this system collects water during high tide and then it's able to release this water during low tide um, utilizing the potential difference that the um, tides have created. The largest system in the world I believe according to my research was um, about 254 megawatts which is quite a large system um, and this was in South Korea. A very similar concept to this is tidal lagoons, which um, are essentially a circular barrage. It, it is able to do the same exact thing, um, but with a somewhat limited capacity. But the, the ideal thing about this is that with this circular system, you can let water in the reservoir during um, high tide and generate electricity. And then once it becomes low tide, it would, it would have sealed off the water in there during high tide and then it could open up again and then generate electricity as the water comes out during low tides. The water will flow both directions in a similar manner to the um, oscillating water column uh, concept we talked about before for the other kinds of systems. Um, this one is a little bit more expensive and has c some capacity limits as well because it's, you're limited to the amount of water that's in this circular reservoir. It's quite expensive to maintain. We'll now look at tidal turbines, which is another means of capturing some energy from the flow of water in the ocean and the tides, um, the oceanic currents um, as well. So um, these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can see the diagram here, um, but basically um, the, the main thing is anchoring for these systems, and they're somewhat comparable to what you would see for offshore oil rigging or offshore wind developments which have already occurred. Um, and some of these turbines can be quite expensive for manufacture, um, manufacturing, but keep in mind that the density of water is much larger than air. Um, so the even with a lower speed, the uh, amount of electricity that can be generated uh, based off of these currents um, is quite substantial. So. That being said, uh, uh, it is a little bit more expensive to manufacture and install. Um, and so another, another system that's similar um, would be tidal fences, which often consist of a protruding um, wall with, it could potentially have a large central blade, otherwise it, it might have uh, many small openings with 
smaller blades, um, similar to the tidal um, turbines here, um, but in more of a um, protruding concrete fence structure. Um, in general, there are some skepticisms and people do challenge um, the ideas associated with wave um, electricity generation and um, tidal power because large scale, some of these um, systems are quite expensive and not necessarily the most efficient. Um, they're not completely comparable in terms of pricing. Um, there, people also are concerned with the routine maintenance that are associated with some of these systems. And it also is harder to design for um, the harsh salt water environment, which induces corrosion. Um, there could be some losses and could be potentially a headache to um, get this power where it needs to go. Perhaps it'd be more economical for uh, especially um, cities that are closer to the water itself. Additionally, there are some environmental concerns where these systems are more invasive and hazardous to local ecology and said sea creatures. So keeping some of the challenges and skepticisms in mind, we can also understand that there is um, some potential and um, looking to the future um, in these technologies, we can be somewhat optimistic. These technologies are still being developed. Um, so part of the reason why they're so expensive and not necessarily economical at the moment is because there's not enough research that's been done. Keep in mind that this energy um, that is available in the Earth's natural cycle, such as the tides and the waves, is relatively untapped. Um, and it really is a cool um, concept to be able to harness some of this green energy because um, it's not um, being utilized. And um, at this point in time, I feel that convenience and convenience and inexpense are valued especially in our culture, um, over responsibly attained electricity. And um, this is something to keep in mind um, and to challenge our, um, our society in general, because I think it would be good to be moving in the direction of more clean and renewable energies such as the, these. These may not be the complete answer because of some of the challenges and skepticisms I've presented, but it's a very um, interesting idea. Well, I appreciate you guys listening to my presentation. I um, hope you enjoyed it.